Hey, this is Craig, the Pool Man with Pool Specialist. Today we are on location at what we call the Mac Daddy. And uh, we're gonna give a little demo of how to actually run all the pumps and the control system and exactly how everything operates. One of the things that I wanna point out here is that you have an overflow drain, which is right there. And that is currently plugged um, because typically you don't have an issue with the overflow in this pool. This right there, that is your fill sensor for your auto fill. And that is a rather important. Um, we had one situation where one of your renters ripped it off and it disappeared. So it is now screwed on. Okay, so this is the spa side switch. Basically, the only reason to have this spa side switch is for the renters. And you'll notice that if they hit the jet pump, the jet pump will turn on. This will put it in spa mode. That turns the heater and that turns on the spa light. You could all do this from your app on your phone, but you don't want to have your renters have access to that wrap app. Okay, this is the pump room. We're gonna go over it piece by piece, and we're gonna start out with the filter pump. Okay, this is the filter pump. The programming is actually contained here. The control system just simply turns it on or off. You can shut this pump off at the pump by hitting the start stop button. And then you can go in and program it. We actually have multiple videos online on how to program it, which are better served to be online. So if you were going to backwash, what you would do is you would turn the filter off and then this is your filter itself. You'll come over to your multi-port and you'll push this handle, turn this clockwise, and put it to backwash. After that, you're gonna come over and you're going to hit the start button on your pump. It will prime up. You'll hear it start. And then you are going to run this for three to five minutes and you are going to watch that sight glass right there. After you run it for about 30 seconds, what you're gonna find is you're gonna the sight glass will, will get dirty, and then after it clears up, you're gonna go ahead and shut the pump off again, simply by hitting the stop button. Then from there, we're going to push this handle down and flip this to rinse. We're gonna go ahead and turn the pump back on. Let it prime up. You want it to rinse for approximately 15 seconds to 30 seconds. And then once it's rinsed, you will shut this pump off again. And then you're gonna come over and flip the handle back to filter. Now you're all set to go. There are a number of what are called actuators on top of valves that control what happens to the pool. You'll notice that that has an off on it. And there is literally a door here and that door closes off that pipe. So when that off is over a pipe, that means that pipe is off. So that happens to be the spa drain. If you were to go into spa mode, what would happen is that actuator would turn around and then it would close off the pool side. And once that closes off, then all the water would get sucked out of the spa into the filter pump. It would go through the system, then it would come off over here and depending on how that actuator set, it would return to the pool or the spa. If you're in spa mode, 
then of course that off has to cover the pool side. Therefore you suck water from the spa and you return the water to the spa. So again I can change that actuator and flip it around to the way it's supposed to be. So that would represent spa mode. You're pulling the water from the spa, returning it to the spa. If you would happen to pull the water from the pool and there's little buttons on these actuators or three position if you put it in the center position you lock it off and then flipping it from one to the other position you're going to change the base of the position so this would then allow the water to come from the pool and it would return to the spa giving the spill over effect. This is the valve that controls the flow from the pool. Right now it's allowing all the water to come in from the main drain and all the water to come in from the skimmer. If you wanted to favor the skimmer you would close off part of the main drain and that would be preferred because more water that you remove from the top of the pool the less debris that falls to the bottom of the pool so that would be the correct position for the pool to operate in during the summertime if you look at the winter time when we reprogram it then this off would have to be over the skimmer because we plug the skimmer and remove the water from it. So correct position is here and then of course that feeds in through that pipe and into the pool suction side. Okay here is your salt system and of course we don't have the flow going right now but normally you should have green lights all the way here. The flow light should be green and the salt light should be green. If the flow light's not green, there's some kind of blockage preventing the water from returning. If the salt light is not green, then that means that you need to add a bag or two bags of salt to it. This is your autofill system. You saw the autofill sensor that was in the pool. And this is the actual valve that goes down to the fill line. If you needed to shut it off for some reason, the manual shut off to the fill, you would simply turn that valve right there and that would close the water off to prevent the water from filling. Normally you would leave that open, the water goes through this valve, this valve turns on and then it comes up through here. That is your controller for that valve. It will take its information from the sensor and then it will determine whether it needs to turn that valve on or turn that valve off. This piece right here is called a zinc anode that does a lot of advantages for the pool. It will save the metals in the pool. It will help prevent staining and a few other things. Okay, this is the heater for the pool. It is actually on the back side of the pool and you'll see the pipes coming through the walls. Um, there's not much you could do on this. In reality, uh, it's already set to the maximum temperature and it is controlled from the control system which takes its me measurement from the pool heat. Okay, last thing in the pool system that I really want to address is what's called the chlorinator. The chlorinator, the feed, comes from here this is a mini valve and so if for some reason the line were to split something were to go bad with the chlorinator you can actually shut that off and then you would also have to shut off the other side and then that would prevent the chlorinator from working the chlorinator is over there that's your chlorinator you would put tabs in it and you could actually in control the flow to the chlorinator through these two mini valves to keep the 
cooled properly chlorinated. This is my temperature sensor for the pool and the spa water. The temperature sensor um, would go back to the control panel and there's also an air temp that tells it what the outdoor temperature is and that will put it in and out of freeze protect mode in the winter time. Okay, this is the spa jet pump and you'll notice that there's a couple valves on it and the reason the valves are on it is if you have to empty the pump basket because this is actually below the level of the spa you would have to close this valve and so again you have this same off position that's on this that closes the water that would come out of the pump and then you have an off position down here that would close the water going to the pump that way when you take the pump basket off you want to close those valves that way you don't lose prime water doesn't come into it you can empty the basket clean it out put it back and then once you do that make sure that you open both of these valves completely so that the off is on the back side of the valve not covering any of the pipes okay so to take this lid off you're simply going to turn it that way and lift it off it should probably have a certain amount of suction associated with it just pull it off and then you can pull your pump basket out and you can go empty it okay when you put this pump basket back in make sure that that is facing forward it will not fit all the way down unless you are facing forward so it is keyed you want to make sure that the top surface of this is clean and you want to make sure that your o-ring doesn't have any debris on it if it does what will happen is it will suck air in through that lid and the pump will not run properly now we're going to go over the control systems so what you have is this was the old control system which is serving as a circuit breaker box so your circuit breakers this is your pool these are for your jet pump for your spa this is for what used to be the booster pump and this is for the control system and also the lights this is the way that it's controlled now um, it is now in what's called timeout mode and you can then hit any one of the buttons and turn on the related feature for those buttons you'll notice you can also change the functionality of your valves so right now it's in pool mode then you could go into spa fill spa empty spa and then hit it again and it goes back into pool mode so whenever you're checking your actuators you want to put your system in service or timeout preferably timeout mode and then pool mode and then you go back to make sure that you're sucking water from the pool and returning water from the pool okay if you needed to turn your heater on you could hit this button and that will bypass your temperature sensors and turn the heater on provided the heating is not above 104 degrees above here we actually have our power center for our salt system and then if we go down below we have our transformer for our lights because the lights are 12 volts which is added safety coming back to the automation system if we hit this button once we go to auto mode be very careful because sometimes that button double bounces and then you would wind up in service mode and nothing would actually function we couldn't communicate with this to see what's going on don't ever use service mode um, because it, unless it's an emergency situation and you're trying to intentionally keep everything on or off for a long period of time preferably when you're servicing the pool go to timeout mode and therefore if you forget 
it will go back in roughly two hours to auto mode. Okay, so when we go into actually winter mode and we set the pool up unique for winter mode, what happens is this actuator up here, we actually lock it in this position. So the little switch in the back you're gonna find in the winter time is in the center position because I always, always want the water going to the spa. This actuator down here actually functions 100%. However, it is hooked up to a special auxiliary that we control and therefore we can, we can purge the water in the hot tub. However, in the winter time, because the pool is closed and people want to keep the hot tub hot, it doesn't keep running over. So every time that you switch out people at the house, we go ahead and purge all the water of it and let it run. And of course, this over here, that is closed off so that we do not take any water out of the pool skimmer. All the water would come out of the main drain. That way we don't have to be so concerned on the water level in the pool. Because typically, the autofill is, the water to it is turned off in the winter time to prevent the showers and everything in this house from freezing. That concludes our video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please give us a call and we will help you out as much as you can. We can access this through the internet, on our computers and phones, and walk you through anything you might need to know. Thank you for watching and have a great day.